everybody, this is Ms. Bufford, and in this video, we're going to talk about the quantum mechanical model. And your learning goals are to understand the basic organization of electrons and atoms according to the quantum mechanical model of the atom. So Bohr's atom is a really good but really simplified way to think about the arrangement of electrons for simple atoms, um, and this is just elements 1 through 18. But for larger atoms, larger than 18, the electron configurations start to get a little bit more complicated, and Bohr's uh, diagrams are no longer um, extremely useful in being able to describe just the locations and um, the order in which those electrons are added to the atoms themselves. And um, the model of the atom has been updated since Bohr's time, and this newer accepted model is called the quantum mechanical model. This differs from Bohr's model by showing that electrons don't necessarily orbit the nucleus, rather they exist in orbitals of varying shapes within each energy level around an atom. And so if you take a look at this really pretty picture over here, um, it shows all of the different locations where electrons can um, exist around the nucleus of an atom in different energy levels. And this one is not uh, drawn to scale. I have another um, poster by the same um, artist on another slide later on that shows these orbitals to scale and can kind of show how they can layer on, on top of each other in different energy levels. Uh, but it's not possible to directly observe an electron, and so we use probability wave functions to describe the locations where they're most likely to be found. And that's what these shapes are. It's just the uh, mathematical representations of where electrons are likely to be found around the nucleus of an atom. And um, since the, these shapes are just, like we said, describing probable locations, and we call these orbitals. Uh, since these shapes just indicate those probable locations, an atom must have an electron to occupy that orbital or the orbital does not exist around that atom. So it only exists if there's an electron there um, to occupy that space. And so here's that picture that shows these orbitals to scale. Um, it's really hard to see the ones up here in this first energy level. They're really super tiny. But um, this scale allows you to be able to see how, you know, these different shapes can kind of be um, piled on top of each other in different energy levels around the atom um, to represent the spaces where those electrons can be. And so in the previous video, when we talked about Bohr's model, um, we mentioned the number of electrons that Bohr said that could occupy each energy level. And these numbers are still true, um, but the quantum mechanical model has kind of refined the organization of electrons within those energy levels that Bohr described. And just as a recap, uh, Bohr said in his model that the first energy level, or n equals 1, can hold up to 2 electrons. The second energy level can hold up to 8 electrons. The third energy level can hold up to 18 electrons. And the fourth energy level can hold up to 32 electrons. Well, the quantum mechanical model um, says that the electrons that are allowed in each energy level are subdivided into orbitals. And there's four different types of orbitals that we're going to talk about in this video. There are s orbitals that can each hold up to two electrons. And p orbitals um, that can hold up to six electrons within an energy level. And d orbitals can hold up to ten electrons within an or energy level. And f orbitals can hold up to 14 electrons within each energy level. And just on the surface, looking at Bohr's numbers and the numbers for the orbitals in the quantum mechanical model, it doesn't really seem like they match up. But if we take a look at Bohr's model, he said that the first energy level can hold up to two electrons. And that just means the first energy level can only have an s orbital. All right, so it only has an s orbital. It can only hold up to two electrons. The second energy level, um, Bohr said, can hold up to eight electrons. And so that means, according to the quantum mechanical model, that the second energy level has both an s and a p orbital, or s and p orbitals, right? Because 2 plus 6 is equal to 8. Then energy level 3, which Bohr said could hold up to 18 electrons, will have an s, a p, and a d orbitals. So s, p, and d orbitals for energy level 3. 
And then energy level four will have S, P, D, and F orbitals, right? So two plus six plus 10 plus 14 equals 32 electrons. And so this is just showing, you know, a refinement of, you know, what Bohr thought um, as far as the number of electrons that could exist in each energy level, which, you know, he was correct in that, but the quantum mechanical model came and said, okay, well, you know, now there's all these different orbitals and electrons have to be organized into these different orbitals. And so energy levels contain different kinds of orbitals. And then on top of that, um, there's some further division of electrons in the quantum mechanical model. And so each energy level that an atom has can have its own s, p, d, and f orbitals if it can contain enough electrons. But now s orbitals, so any energy level that has an s orbital will only ever have one s orbital. And s orbitals, they can, oops, I'm skipping ahead here. They can only have two electrons. So that's a total of two electrons in any s orbital in any energy level. All right. But energy levels that contain p orbitals, we said that the p orbitals total, they can hold up to six electrons, but each energy level that has p orbitals can have up to three p orbitals. And so each individual p orbital, or we could think of them as sublevels, can contain two electrons for a total of six p orbital electrons. And then d orbitals can hold up to 10 electrons. And so each one of these individual d orbitals um, can contain two electrons for a total of that 10 total d orbital electrons. And then f orbitals, you know, the f orbital, there, there can be up to seven different f orbitals within an energy level, and each of these can hold two electrons for a total of 14. All right, so um, not only do our ener do energy levels contain these different types of orbitals, but there are you know different numbers of these different types of orbitals depending on how many electrons there are to fill them. So let's take a look at a representation that I think will kind of organize all of the information I just gave you into a, a neater um, packet. So I've got my first energy level. And according to Bohr's model, the first energy level can only hold two electrons, and so it only has a single s orbital. All right. Then energy level two can have um, an s orbital and a p orbital for a total of eight electrons. And so if each one of these orbitals contains two electrons, there's all of our eight electrons right there. All right. And then energy level three can hold up to 18 electrons. And so we've got one s orbital, three p orbitals, and five d orbitals possible. And if each of these can contain two electrons, then we have a total of 18 here for the uh, third energy level. There's two. And then for the fourth energy level, I can have s, p, d, and f orbitals if I have enough electrons. And if each of these orbitals can contain two electrons, then I will have a total of 32 electrons in my fourth energy level. So I hope that this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions about this, please go ahead and write them in your notebook and we'll discuss them in class. Um, but I'll see you guys in class. Thanks for watching Buffered Chemistry. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more chemistry help.